So we're going to review completing the square. Um, this is just how I teach it. Um, there are different ways to talk about this and teach this. If you remember what your high school teacher did and you're good with completing the square, then just do it that way. You don't have to do it the way that I do it. But um, the way I do it is, uh, again, like how I think about algebra altogether. I think of the choices that we make to, uh, to do things or to manipulate the equation not as the opposite, do the opposite operation, blah, blah, blah. I think of it as what is my goal? What am I trying to achieve? And then make a decision on what mathematics I want to do based on that goal. So in this particular case, the first thing I would want to do is check to see if I can factor this. What we'll find is you can in fact factor this, but um, the instructions for the problem this is associated with and the skill that you probably need to practice is completing the square. So let's take a look at that. And we'll get um, integer values because it is factorable. Um, but we'll figure that out as we go. So um, they clearly state that they want this form, x plus d, the quantity squared, equals e, where e and d are just constants. They're numbers. They're real numbers. So um, this is the format where we would complete the square. We're trying to force this to be um, a situation where I can use the square root property. That's one of the values of uh, completing the square. Another value of completing the square is I can get my, my uh, quadratic equation into what would be referred to as the vertex form, and I can find the coordinates of the vertex. All that aside, I rewrite my equation to do the following. And because I'm completing the square, I'm going to put a big space here. And let's actually change the color of that because I prefer to change the color of that. You'll see in a second when I refer to it. And I put equals negative 33 over here. Why? Because I subtract 33 from both sides. OK? So this becomes a 0. And then 0 minus 33 is negative 33. Now my goal, remember, that was to have something that looked like this. Damn it. Um, x plus d, or x minus d, squared equals e. So I want, in the end, for my structure to be a binomial x plus or minus some number squared equals some constant, some number. Okay? I'm going to erase the e. Which means right before that, because we understand what the exponent means, the exponent of 2 means take that binomial, multiply it twice. So if I use that idea and go backwards, it really kind of means that right before that, I'm going to have x minus something times x minus something, or plus, doesn't matter. We're going to see that this one's minus. But we know that this, these two numbers, or these three numbers, are the same number. Okay, Whether it's 2, 2, and then 2, so it's x minus 2, the quantity squared, they're going to be the same number. Why? Because we want it to be something squared. So if, in fact, I need to have these two numbers to be the same, and we understand when we distribute stuff, or when we factor things, that this number here is the sum of the two numbers in the pink blank, the, and the two numbers in the pink blank are the same number, that means negative 14 is double that number. Or negative 14 is the sum of those two numbers, and they have to be the same. Which really just means that this number is negative 7 and negative 7, because when I add them together, that'll be negative 14. We also know that the number that goes in the blue blank is the square is the square of this one, or the product of these two negative sevens, or the square of negative seven. So that's going to be plus 49. So now I've created the, the trinomial that is a perfect square trinomial, such when I factor it, it'll be two binomials the same, or in other words, a binomial squared. Now here's the thing. We decided to add this 49 to the left side of the equation. We, as the mathematician, is trying to work on this problem. We decided to add the 49 on the left-hand side, which means we have to add 49 on the other side of the equation. When I add 49 to negative 33, I get 16. And so that's the structure they wanted for that particular problem. Now, if we finish the sol we, if we go to finish solving this, which is the last step of the problem, but um, if we wanted to determine what the value for x would be, at this point in time, I can just take the square root of both sides and get x minus 7, the quantity squared, 
take the square root, I'll get x minus 7. On the right-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of 16, which, of course, is plus or minus 4. From here, I have x or minus 7 equals negative 4. I also have x minus 7 equals positive 4. I can add 7 to both sides of each of these equations, and I'll get x equals, the top one is 3, and the bottom one is 11. And those are our solutions for that equation determined by completing the square. And if we factored this, found the factors of 33, that add to negative 14, that would be 3 and 11, because 3 times 11 is 33. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 3 and 11, because we would get uh, negative 3 and negative 11 as the values in our binomials. We would get this x minus 3 and x minus 11. But once we set x minus 3 equal to 0 and x minus 11 separately equal to 0, now we get x equals 3 and x equals 11. Okay? Where's my mouse?